Thank you for downloading this recording of Private Peaceful from the BBC. It's version one of four different ones, rendered to a format known as binaural, which is designed to give an immersive and surrounding audio experience using a standard media player and stereo headphones. For more information, terms of use, and an opportunity to tell us what you thought, please visit the blog on the Radio 4 website. Next, you'll hear a test signal designed to help you identify where the sounds should be coming from, and then the drama will begin. This is a BBC test recording. This is the left channel. This is the right channel. This is the centre channel. This is the LFE channel. This is the left surround channel. This is the right surround channel. Lay me low, lay me low, lay me low, where no one can see me. Private Peaceful by Michael no Morpurgo, dramatized by Simon Reed. Five past ten. You have the whole night ahead of you, Tamo. I shan't sleep. I won't dream it away. I've had nearly eighteen years of yesterdays and tomorrows. And tonight, I want to remember as many of them as I can. Tonight, more than any other night of my life, I want to feel alive. Come on, Tomo. Do you want to piggyback? I don't want to go to school, Charlie. Yes, you do. You might learn something. Big Joe doesn't have to go. And I don't think that's fair at all. You're Big Joe's... Big Joe. Big Joe stays at home with his mother, sitting up in his tree all day long, singing oranges and lemons. He's always happy. Always laughing. I wish I could be at home like him. I don't want to go, Charlie. I don't want to go to school. First day's the worst, Tomo. It's not so bad, honest. Whenever you say honest, Charlie, I know it's not true. Boy in line. Come on out, slouch boy. Hands out of your pockets. What have I told you about coming to school in bare feet, Jimmy Parsons? And your hands are filthy. Wash them. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. A new boy. A new boy to add to my trials and tribulations. Name, boy? Tomo, sir. Thomas Peaceful. Oh, first a Charlie Peaceful, and now a Thomas Peaceful. Was not one peaceful enough? Well, remember this, Thomas Peaceful. Here I am your lord and master. You do what I say when I say it. You do not lie, you do not cheat, and you do not blaspheme. These are my commandments. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Now, march into the schoolroom. At the double, come on. Quick march. Come on, pick your feet up. Quick, quick! From the Battle of Waterloo to the Siege of Mafeki, Admiral Nelson to Baden Powell, great British heroes fighting for their country and their sovereign. Thomas Peaceful. Yes, sir. Pay attention. And your bootlaces are undone. Tie them up before you trip. Uh, I can't, sir. 
Can't is not a word we use in my classroom, Thomas Peaceful. We shall have to teach you how to tie your laces. Molly, you show him. Yes, sir. Molly is a new girl, like you. I'm not a new girl. <laughs> Silence. She is new, impudent boy. But she can teach you how to tie your laces. And that's what we're all here for, peaceful, to learn. So you've made a friend already, Tomo. She's not my friend. Aren't I? Hello. Hello. I'm Molly. I'm Charlie, Tomo's brother. I know. You do? My father's a new gamekeeper, up at the big house. Where do you come from? Peru. Where? I'm the queen of the Amazons. You what? I'm from Oakhampton. Never been as far as Oakhampton. We sometimes go to Hatherley, uh, to the market. But we stay round here, in Italy mostly. What does your father do? He's the Colonel's forester. So our fathers will be working together. I suppose so. Boy, that's much better than your dad, Charlie Peaceful. Form a scab and drop off Jimmy Parsons. Hey, Big Joe. What are you doing here? So, Tomo, slow worm. That's lovely, Joe. But you go home now. Mother will be worried where you've got to. Hey, Peaceful, you and Charlie have got a loony for a brother. What did you say, Jimmy Parsons? Your brother's a loony. Your brother's a loony. <laughs> oi, oi, you fight my brother, Jimmy Parsons. You fight with me. He was being nasty about Big Joe, Charlie. You dumb breath, Jimmy. You are for it. Peaceful, come on, then. Go on. Uh, come on, Peaceful. Uh, uh. Don't need schooling. You're a wild beast who need taming. You both got the cane. Bend over, Parsons. Yo! 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 Thank you, sir. Peaceful. Thank you so much, sir. Right, let that be a lesson to you all. Next time, these boys will be expelled. With nothing more to look forward to in their miserable lives than snagging turnips in the field. Now, school is over for the day. Go home, the lot of you. Jimmy Parsons won't be doing that again, Tomo. I ate him where it hurts, in the ghoulies. My nose hurts a bit, Charlie. Well, so does my bum. What did you boys get up to at school today? Oh, this and that. Tomo? How was your first day? Big Joe came up to the school gates with a slow worm. Worm! But what happened to you both? Look at the state of you. Greetings to you all. Father! Hello, James. Better late than never. Your sub is on the stove. Thank you very much, my Hazel Dazel. Hard day? Isn't it always when the Colonel's calling the shots? And how is the Colonel? Silly old fart. <laughs> Mad old duck. <laughs> he may well be a silly old fart, but it's the Colonel who pays your wages and owns the roof over our heads. So you all show him more respect. I'll show respect where respect's due, my lover. <laughs> James. Now, boys, off to bed. And don't forget your bedpan. Well, what about the washing up? We'll, we'll do, do it. it. Hurry up, Charlie. School in the morning. Why do we have to go to school? You know, Tomo, I wish I'd paid more attention to the reading and the writing and the whatnot when I was at school. And then maybe I wouldn't now be working for the Colonel. It's not fair. Tell you what, Tomo. Come and find me up in the woods after school tomorrow. I could do with some help clearing those dead oak trees. The only dead wood round ears in Tomo's head. She may be old and rotten to the core, but this old oak is a stubborn old lady. Is the big oak dead then? Struck by lightning a few years ago now. Pass me that flask of water, Tomo. Oh, 
us, Benner. Once these oats are clear, Tomo, the walnuts will thicken in their place. I don't like walnuts. Walnut trees are special, Tomo. Their wood's best for making fine furniture. I like it up here in the woods with you, Father. Me and you. Just the two of us. Keeps you out of mischief, Tomo. Who do you love the most? Eh? Me or Charlie? Or Big Joe? Or Big Joe. I'll tell you, Tomo, I've had three sons, and each one I have loved so much that when the next ones come along, I couldn't fathom how I had any more love in me. And did you? Have you? Of course, Tomo. I love you all. Now, stand aside. She'll fall away from us when I finished her off. the oak tree, her last gasp. There she goes. Look up there. Come back, Tomo. She's swaying when all the other trees are standing still. Don't walk towards the tree, Tomo. She's falling. Get out of the way, Tomo. Don't just stand there. Run, Tomo, run! Father? Father, come out from under there. Take my hand. Why aren't you saying anything? Why aren't you breathing? Get up! Get up! Get up! Man that is born of woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow. Yet, O Lord, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Come, ye blessed children of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Mrs. Peaceful. Colonel. This may seem a little indelicate, I don't like to bring this up at such a sad time, but it's a question of the cottage. Strictly speaking, it's a tithe cottage, tied to your late husband's employment on the estate. Now, of course, with him gone... You want us out? Well, not if we can come to some arrangement. There's a position up at the house that would suit you, as lady's maid to my dear wife. Well, that's very good of you, Colonel, but I have my children. Oh, Charles can be employed in my hunt kennels. Thomas has only just started school. As for the other one, there's always the lunatic asylum in Exeter. I could never do that, Colonel. Never. I think you understand the position you're in, Mrs. Peaceful. Yes. I do. My condolences, Mrs. Peaceful. Good day. He was trying to save me. If only I'd run, he wouldn't now be lying dead and buried. All I've ever thought is that I killed my own father. Twenty past eleven. I don't want to eat. Stew, potatoes. I've no appetite. I should drink something. Water. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> the times I would have scoffed that stew, glugged down that water. But not now. Charlie. Hmm? 
What are we going to do? Who are? Uh... About the colonel. Being hungry all the time. We'll go poaching. Father said that's stealing. Look where that got him. What do you mean? No one owns a wildlife tunnel. If I was but a young man, I'd soon go a hunting. To me right fall the diddle dero. To me right fall the diddle dee. What was that? An owl. No, it wasn't. That was the wheel wheel. You're a twit, Tomo. It's tawny owls that hoot. Barn owl screech. That was a barn owl. Hush now, and listen to the choir of the hills. No moonlight. It's a fine night for poaching, Tomo. Who's that? Deer. Deer? Aren't they a bit big for us to catch? Of course. Just look at them. I think I'd just fallen down a rabbit hole. Oh, good. I'll set a snare. You go and look out. There's nothing to see. Haven't your eyes gotten used to the dark? This is where Father died, Charlie. Shh. Do you think his ghost is watching us? Whoa! Charlie! <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> Come on. Follow me. The water covers our tracks, hides our voices. What kind of fish can we net? Hmm. Sea trout. Salmon. Salmon? The whole of Ellerslie will know we've been poaching in the Colonel's River. Salmon swim upstream to spawn. Who's to say they haven't taken a liking to the village brook? At least we'll have something to eat with our potatoes. To me right fall the diddle dero. To me right fall the diddle dee. on the stairs. What is it? It's sad news. The Colonel's wife has passed away. She was a frail old woman and she's given up her struggle. Does that mean the Colonel won't give you a job anymore, even if you wanted one? So that's it then. No work for you and the Colonel's thrown us out? No. I've agreed to do the Colonel's linen and sewing. Most of it I can bring home. And you're to leave school, Charlie, and work in the Colonel's hunt kennels. Just what I've always wanted. It's time you had a proper job, Charlie. And now we'll have some proper money coming in. And we're staying put. Did you do that for Jimmy Parsons? Go on then, peaceful. You're not worth the bother. Need big brother to fight for you. Go home, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Molly. That's all right. I hope you don't think I'm mothering you. No, no. How did your mother die, Molly? Why'd you ask? Sorry. She died as I was born. Oh. She gave me life, Tomo. Don't you feel bad? Bad? No. 
I feel sad that she isn't here to love me anymore. I still love her, like you still love your father. I suppose. Can I tell you something, Molly? Tell me what? I think you are... Oh, Charlie! Race you to the river. Now? Now. Ready, steady, go! Hey, wait for me. Mind the mud, Tomo. I love mud. The feel of it. The smell of it. The lurking about in it. Hey, Tomo, stop that. I'm covered in enough muck as it is. What have you been up to, smelly? Oh, you know, cleaning all the dog dirt from the Colonel's hunt kennels. He's got dozens of hounds. No wonder you're such a sight. I dare you to take off all your clothes. No. Go on. No. I will if you will. No. no. You must be mad, Molly. Is it freezing? No. It's lovely. Strip off and come on in. All right, I will. Here I come. Charlie! Hey! <laughs> it's freezing, Molly. Have you got used to the cold yet? No, I'm turning blue, look. You come on in, Tamo. I won't watch. Not in a million years. I promise. Here I come. that cold, Charlie, and you feel so free all naked. I want to die right here and now. That's a strange thing to say, Molly. I never want tomorrow to come, because no tomorrow could ever be as good as today. I'm going to tell the future. I've seen the gypsies do it. Have you? How do they do it? Pebbles from the riverbed, like this. there. Then they scatter them in the water. Watch. Well, the stones say that as long as we stick together, we'll be lucky and happy till the day we die. And the stones never lie. So you're stuck with me. The stones say who you'll marry? Yes. Mr. Peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> What's that noise? Sounds like a swarm of bees. No, it must be the Colonel's car. His car is the only car around for miles. Quick, get dressed, and no peeking, you two. Look, Charlie. She's wringing her plaits out like a wet cloth. Hey, Tomo, she said no looking. Pretty, isn't she? It's coming from the road. It's coming from the sky. An aeroplane! Better not switch off. Might never get the damn thing started again. Hello. Harry Havers, Royal Flying Corps. Reconnaissance training, though the truth is, I reckon I'm a bit lost. That church up there on the hill, is that Lapford Church? Lapford? No, that's Iddersley, St. James's. Iddersley? You saw? Yes. Whoops, then I really was lost. Jolly good thing I stopped, wasn't it? Well, thanks for your help, you better be off. Here, do you like humbugs? Cheerio, then. Stand well back. Here we go. I'd like to be in the Royal Flying Corps, Charlie. To fly like a bird. You have to be an officer to fly, Tomo. We weren't born to be officers. 
Was that real, Charlie? Did that really happen? Well, we got our humbugs, haven't we? So it must have been real, mustn't it? Ten to midnight. I'm not sure I ever really believed in God. In church, I gaze up at Jesus hanging on the cross in the stained glass window. And I'd feel sorry for him. Because I could see how cruel it was and how much it must be hurting him. I knew Jesus was a good and kind man. But I never really understood why God, who was supposed to be his father, and almighty and powerful, would let them do that to him. Would let him suffer so much. I believed then, as I believe now, that crossed fingers and molly stones were every bit as reliable or unreliable as praying to God. But if there's no God, does that mean there's no heaven? Tonight, we want to believe there's a heaven, that there is a new life after death. Death is not a full stop. That hound's no good at hunting, Peaceful. Lame in the back legs. Had a day. Yes, sir. It's always getting left behind, getting lost. Yes, sir. No use to anyone. You know what to do. Yes, sir. Charlie. What is it, lad? She's done you no harm. Now, listen here, young man. They're my hounds, and I decide whether they live or die. Clear? Quite right, sir. Tomo will give me a hand, won't you, Tomo? What are you saying, Charlie? Give me the gun, sir. Good man. You take care of it. Young women, they run like hares on the mountains. Young women, they run like hares on the mountains. If I was but a young man, I'd soon go a hunting. To me right fall the diddle dare oh. To me right fall the diddle dee. That's right, Joe. Mm. I'll pass them from the washing line, and you fold the narrow ends of the sheet together. <gasps> Doggy! What on earth? Quick, Mother, hide her inside. The Colonel's following. He's not following, Charlie. Peaceful, he's right behind you. Uh, I'll get the sheets ready for you now, Colonel. I'm not here about the blasted linen. Thomas? Sir? Charles? Well, it's got nothing to do with me. Honest? Your sons, Mrs. Peaceful, are liars as well as thieves. I beg your pardon, Colonel. I had to do it, Mother. Do what, Charlie? He told me to shoot her. Shoot who? She's my dog. I can do what I like with her. Who? He stole one of my dogs, Mrs. Peaceful. And as village magistrate in Italy. So, Colonel, if you were going to shoot this hound, then I presume she was of no use to you anymore. Well, no. Joe? Pop indoors and fetch the money mug from the mantelpiece, please. Money mug! I don't know what you're up to, Mrs. Peaceful. Money, Mother. Thank you, Joe. Here, Colonel. Sixpence. Not a bad price for a useless old dog. I don't understand. So now she's not stolen, is she, Colonel? Well, I'll be... That's all, Colonel. You're both fired! If I was but a young man, I'd soon go a-hunting. 
To me right, fall the diddle dare To me right, fall the diddle dee. <laughs> Don't know what you're so pleased about, Charlie. You've both lost your jobs. Nice one, Charlie. Those skittles didn't stand a chance. Yeah, I've done it for you, Jimmy. We're a team. Here, Tomo. There's a skittle match Friday fortnight against the King's Arms, Wintley. Except you're not strong enough to hold your own balls, are you, Tomo? Oh, no, Jimmy Parsons. Oh, nice one, Tomo. Mm. Looks like you just lost your place on the Iddesley Skittle team, Jimmy. Find a scrumpy. Oh, bye, Charlie. I'm in the money. I'm thatching. You're out of a job, I hear. Yes, well, thanks, Jimmy. Give us the pennies and I'll fetch the drinks. And another half. Go on, make it a pint. Yeah, why not you go, Charlie Peaceful? Don't worry about me, Farmer Cox. Oh, no one else will, young man. Not since your father died. Your health. Hey, you've got no sons of your own, have you? No. What of it? So how do you manage on the farm? Oh, never really needed the help, in all truth. Except at harvest. Oh, it must be a lot of work for you, all alone. What with the pigs and oh, horses yeah. and what have you? And you're not getting any younger. Hey, JK. <laughs> well, I suppose it'll serve the Colonel right if I do take you on. Both of you. Both of us? Ah, oh, for one wage, mind. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Charlie. Cheer up, Pomo. Pigs are cleaner than dogs. Honest. Honest? Now I know you're telling porkies. Uh, you should be grateful. I saved your bacon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's a shame we won't be working with Marley anymore. Here, Tomo. I need you to do something for me. Oh, yes? Yes. I need you to go over to Molly's house with a letter. Why? I can't afford the stamp. Don't be daft. Deliver it yourself. Can. Why not? Reasons, you know. No. I don't know. Please, Tomo. For me. Good day, Mr. Muggs. Is Molly... Go away. Just go away. We don't want you bothering our Molly. And she don't want to see you. Go on. Molly? Where? Where are you pointing? Of course. You're down by the river. Young women, they run like hares on the mountains. Young women, they run like hares on the mountains. If I was but a young man, I'd soon go a hunting. To me right, fall the diddle dare oh. To me right, fall the diddle dee. Tomo! Oh, Molly, are you all right? Oh, Tomo, I'm so unhappy I could almost laugh. Laugh? The Colonel told Father that you stole the hound, that you're both thieves. Oh. That's why Father won't let me see you anymore. I'm so miserable without you, Tomo. I ate it up at the big house and I ate it at home, too. Oh, Molly. I miss Charlie. I miss him so much. Oh, of course. Uh, Charlie gave me this letter to give to you. Tell him yes. Yes? Yes. I will. Just that? Just that. Oh, Tom, I'm so happy I could cry. Now you could cry. Walk with me. Do you know what they're all talking about up at the big house? Us? With Charlie and me? <laughs> Apart from you. No. What? War. War? War with Germany. We're not at war with Germany, are we? No, not yet. Well, what do you mean, not yet? The Colonel thinks it will happen sooner rather than later. Really? 
Some archduke. What's an archduke? He's been shot in a place called Sarajevo. Where's that? In Germany and France. I know where they are. Well, they're very angry about it. About what? About this archduke getting shot. Why? Who did it? Who knows? But Germany and France are gathering their armies to fight against each other. And when they do, we'll be in it too. We will? Yes. Why? Because we have to fight on the French side against the Germans. What for? The Colonel says so. But what does it all mean? Mean? It means that if we don't fight the Germans, we might be ruled by them, I suppose. Are they nasty, the Germans? I'm not sure, Tomo. But the Colonel ate some. Who doesn't he eat? <laughs> That's true. Anyhow, we should both be off to work before anyone misses us. <laughs> I think I'm in love, Charlie. With Myrtle here. <laughs> You're too young to be in love, Tom. What's happening, Charlie? It's war! It's war! It's war! You will all understand that war is like a herd of cattle that needs feeding. And war's fodder is horses and guns. That's how we beat the boar in the Cape. How we knock the stuffing out of the Zulu. Ah, but they're cart horses. You want hunters, not flowers. They'd no sooner charge in the battle than I'd skip home before last order. <laughs> hey, Joel Farmer Cox. Listen to me. The cavalry needs horses. And the army needs men. Able-bodied young men fulfilling their patriotic duties. Mad old duffer. <laughs> Up the revolution! <laughs> mother, mother, the colonel was ranting on about the horses, and the farmer Cox was arguing with him, and Charlie said, Mother, why are you knitting? Oh, I didn't say, Mother, why are you knitting? <laughs> What's up, Mother? We have a visitor. Hello, Tomo. Charlie. Molly. What is it? What's happened? They've thrown her out. The Colonel and her father have thrown her out. And it's your fault, Charlie Peaceful. No. What's happened, Mol? What's going on? What's going on, Charlie, is that she's going to have your baby. That's what. No. Well, that's that then. She's moving in and we are getting married. Are we, Charlie? Of course. What else? <laughs> but until you are both married, Molly will share my bed with me. That's what those letters were about, wasn't it? Love letters. It weren't just the letters, Tomo. I didn't want to hide it from you. Honest. I didn't want to hurt you either. Because you love her, don't you? Well, so do I. I love her. Why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you tell me? I hate you. No, you don't, Tomo. Anyway, you'll be my best man, won't you? Well, unless you think I should ask Jimmy Parsons. Jimmy Parsons? Mm -hmm. That heffalon. Friends? together in the sight of God, to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate, not to be taken lightly 
or wantonly, to satisfy men's carnal lusts and appetites, like brute beasts that have no understanding. Wilt thou, Charles Peaceful, have this woman, Margaret Monks, to thy wedded wife? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honour and keep her in sickness and in health, so long as ye both shall live? I will, yes. And wilt thou, Mar Margaret Monks, have this man, Charles Peaceful, to thy wedded husband? Wilt thou obey him and serve him, love, honour and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live? I will. For as much as Charles and Margaret have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and this company. I pronounce that they be man and wife together. I didn't know your real name was Margaret, Molly. And since when have you been Charles, child? <laughs> You'll be lord of the manor next. No, nah, not me, Mo. The big house and all the lands hereabouts in Eddersley should belong to all of us by rights. One day... One day, Charlie Peaceful, you'll learn to live for today, not for tomorrow. Cheer up, it's your wedding day. <laughs> I love you, Molly. And I love you, Charles <laughs> Peaceful. <laughs> I love all of you Peacefuls. Kiss the boy! Kiss the boy! <laughs> Listen to me. What is it? This official. War office. They want the horses. Sequestered, it says here. Yeah, but they can't do that. Uh, you can't argue with them, Charlie. We dance to their tune. I need you to deliver them to Atherley Market. I'll do it. Sons of mine, I hear you thrilling to the trumpet call. Gentlemen, boys and girls, I shan't beat about the bush. I shan't tell you it's all tickety boo out there in France. There's been too much of that nonsense already, in my view. So I'll tell you straight it's no picnic, it's an hard slog. But there's only one question to ask yourselves about this war Who would you rather see marching through your streets? A slut or the Hun? Because mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't stop them out there in France, the Germans will be here. Right here, on your doorstep. They'll come marching through, burning your houses, violating your women, killing your children. They've already beaten brave little Belgium, swallowed her up in one gulp, and now they've taken a fair slice of France too. If we don't beat them at their own game, they'll gobble us up as well. Well, do you want the hun here? Do you? No! 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 no. no. So, shall we blast and the kingdom come? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Good. Then we shall need you. Your king needs you. Your country needs you. And all those brave lads out in France need you too. And remember one thing, lads, and I can vouch for this. All the ladies love a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> so, who'll be the first brave lad to come and take the king's shilling? Who'll lead the way? I'm looking for boys with hearts of oak. Lads who love their king and country. Men who hate the lousy Hun. I'll volunteer. That's it, sir. Jimmy Bleeding Parsons. Oh, my son. Me? You go and fight. But I'm only 15. Because every man's duty to fight when his country calls. That's what I say. Come on. You ain't a coward, are you? Coward. Coward. 
Sons of mine, I hear you thrilling to the trumpet call of war. Farmer Cox sent me to market this morning. The army was there recruiting. Jimmy Parsons joined up. Others too. Don't you worry about it, Tomo. They can't make you go. You're too young anyway. I'm nearly 16. You've got to be 19 to serve overseas, Tomo. They don't want babies. Baby boy. <laughs> you wouldn't go, Charlie, would you? You wouldn't leave me with the baby on the way. I'll be honest, Ma. It's been bothering me a lot lately. I don't want to go. I'd shoot a rat because it might bite me. I'd shoot a rabbit because I can eat it. Why would I ever want to shoot a German? Never even met a German. But I've seen the lists in the papers. You know, all the killed and the wounded. Pages of them, poor beggars. It hardly seems right, does it, me being here, enjoying life while they're over there. They say we've got the Germans on the run already. One big push, they reckon, and they'll all be running back to Berlin with their tails between their legs. And then all our boys can come home. With a bit of luck, I'll be back to wet the baby's head. And Tomo will look after you. You'll be the man about the place, won't you, Tomo? I'm not staying. I'm coming with you. Boys, boys. I love what I know. And what I know is my family and Molly and the countryside I've grown up in. I'll do all I can to protect everything I love. And I'll do it with you, Charlie. Quarter past two. I'm not sleepy. I should be able to fight off sleep by now. I've done it often enough on lookout in the trenches. I used to long for that moment when you surrender to sleep. When you drift away into the warmth of nothingness. Well, after this night is over, I can drift away. I can sleep forever. Putties and polish, a cigarette and a smile. A sepia a soldier, no more than a child. You roared Tipperary down to the train, but in Flanders the gun sang a different refrain. You'll have to behave like a 19-year-old from now on, Tomo. How do I do that, then? Will you follow my lead? Standing in line, waiting to sign. I'm Charlie Peaceful, Standing and he's Thomas line, Peaceful. We're twins, and we're volunteering. Date of birth? 5th of October, 95. 5th of October, 95. Both of you? Of course. Only I'm older than him. By one hour. You'll do. Next. Standing in line. Stand still! Stomach in, chest out! Look to your front, peaceful, you horrible little man. Down in that mud, peaceful, where you belong, you nasty little worm. Down! Are you the best they can send us these days, peaceful? Vermin, that's what you are, lousy vermin. And I've got to make a soldier out of you. Look at you. Clowns. Clowns in cloth caps and khaki. Look at his cap badge. It's crooked! You're a blot on creation, peaceful. What are you? Happy to be here, Sergeant. When you get over to France, you want to get your head blown off, peaceful? No, Sergeant. You want to get your ass blown off, peaceful? No, Sergeant. You want to get your nuts blown off, peaceful? At least they got nuts, Sergeant. Right! You're on a charge, peaceful! Sergeant? Standing in line, waiting to sign. Standing in line to go over. Tied to a gun wheel. Field punishment number one. Insubordination in a time of war is mutiny. And mutiny is punishable by death. 
by firing squad. Private Peaceful has got off lightly. Tomorrow, you will all receive your embarkation orders for France. This isn't a game anymore, children. Ask Private Peaceful. By the left, quick, march. As empire, you marched up to war. Where fear choked and rum salt, they taught you to plough. Well, Tom, we're in France. But those soldiers are all English. Wounded English. On their way home. Standing to go over. And a half-empty washing line serves to remind that you've fallen. And always standing in line. An aeroplane. I can almost taste the umbugs, Charlie. Bloody tough. Company! Halt! Tension! At ease, men. You've all had a long voyage, a hard march. You have leave to visit the local estaminet. The what, Sergeant? The pub, Private Peaceful. And the first round's on you. Yeah! Army marches on its tummy. Oh, look at this. Maybe. Egg and chips. <laughs> this is for you, Tommy. Not Tommy, Tom O. I do not understand, but I think you are too young to be in a war. I'm old enough. I'm fighting with my pals, yeah. with my brother. Yeah, that's right. Go home, Tommy. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Jimmy, vous comprenez? Who like he a little tumble in the hay? <laughs> You're just boys. Arma, arma, youngers. Momo, what are you drinking, baby face? A and you've got a face like a whore's arse, Jimmy. <laughs> so shove a sock up it. Yeah, more beers. Beer? I'd rather have cider. Ears to Sergeant Anley. Sergeant, Sergeant Horrible Anley. Anley. And ears to Widdersley. And Mr. Muddins. And the Colonel. May they all suffer the misery they so richly deserve. Yeah. <laughs> You're drunk, Tomo. <laughs> I've never been drunk before. Yeah, but you will be drunk again. And here's to Molly. To Molly. To Molly. Battered down to the ground, down upon the dugout floor. Put that bloody fag out, Parsons, lest you want your head blown off. Sergeant? This is the front line, Private. Don't give the German snipers something to aim at. Just another puff, Sergeant. Put it out, now! Thank you, Sergeant. Ken Wilkes. Listen, men. Word has come from headquarters that we must send out patrols to find out which regiments have come into the line opposite, and in what strength. Isn't that what the spotter planes are for, sir? It is, Private, but I would no more question an order from a superior officer than you should. Righto. Volunteers. There's a double rum ration in it. Well, then I'll volunteer. Yeah, count me in. Tommel? My head still hurts, Charlie. Well, you can skip the rum, Tommel. Come on. It's a fine night for poaching. I will if you will. <laughs> it's the whole Liddersley Skittle team. <laughs> it's so dark out here in no man's land, I can hardly see where I'm going. Hush now. <laughs> Charlie, it's deeper than ours, wider too, and more solidly constructed, built to last, like they mean to stay. Deserted. Where are their sentries, for God's sake? Not a whisper, not a word. All the German spotters were done for. Germans. I'll throw a grenade. All the Germans are dead. No. Look, they were moving. Grab him, peaceful. Let's get him back. Bundle him over the top. Quick, quick. Jesus, a flare! 
Thank you, Private. Thank you for disobeying my order. <laughs> Anything for an officer, sir. Take my watch, peaceful. A modest gift from me to you for the most generous of gifts that you have given to me. Sir? You've given me more time on this earth, peaceful. Oh, it's wonderful, sir. Ready, wonderful. I turned down to the ground, down upon the dugout floor. Minute past three. I keep checking the time. Each time I do it, I put the watch to my ear, listen for the tick. It's still there. Softly slicing away the seconds, then the minutes, then the hours. Charlie told me this watch would never stop, never let me down, unless I forgot to wind it. The best watch in the world, he said. A wonderful watch. But it isn't. If it was such a wonderful watch, it would do more than simply keep time. Any old watch can do that. A truly wonderful watch would make time. Then if it stopped, time itself would have to stand still. And this night would never have to end. And morning never come. Charlie always said we were living on borrowed time out here. Attention! Thank you, Sergeant Hanley. At ease, men. Hello. I'm your new commanding officer, Lieutenant Buckland. Christ, he's young. Here's the situation. Don't even shave by the look it's of his rosy enough. cheeks. For many months now, Fritz has been pounding away at wipers trying to batter her into submission. She's bruised, but not broken. If we give way, then wipers will be lost. Wipers must not be lost. <clears throat> Why must wipers not be lost, sir? In more rubble and ruin than a town. I mean, what's the point? We don't go forward. We can't go back. We just sit here and dodge the whiz back. Enough, Private Peaceful. You and your brother, sentry duty. Oh. Now! Blasted wasteland. It's not a field anymore. No trees. Not a blade of grass. It's a land of mud and craters. You see those humps beyond our wire, Charlie? Mm. They're the unburied. Some in field grey uniforms. Some in khaki. There are birds up there, and they're singing. Now look, rats! I hate rats! They'd stump them to death in the mud. It's not the rats you should be worrying about, Tommel. Look! Christ! All oh, that yellow coming our way! Mustard gas! 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 
Gas! Gas! Gas! Gas! Gas! Gas! Gas! You know the drill. Fix bayonets. Fix bayonets. Christ! Christ! You're panicking inside that gas mask, peaceful! Calm down! I can't breathe! I have to breathe now! I can't run without breathing! Mr. Fritz, please, don't shoot me. I don't shoot, boys. Go, boy. Go, Tommy, go! Next. Yes? A private peaceful doctor. I was in the gas attack, sir. Let's have a look at you. Mm -hmm. You can only have caught a whiff of it. You were lucky. But my eyes... I can't breathe. Calm down, Private. I feel sick. Take a look outside and you'll see something that makes you feel sick. Sir? Corpses. Rows and rows of them. All laying out neatly on the grass. But I shouldn't even be fighting here. I'm underage. Underage? Give me your small book. Mm -hmm. See? 5th of October, 95. Twin. It's official. Next. Tomo! Charlie! Hey! What are you doing on a stretcher? I chased after him, but they shot me in the foot. Can you believe it? Shot me right through my boot. I bled like a pig. Does it still hurt? I can't feel a thing. But they're sending me back. Back? Congratulations, peaceful. You'll take it home. Yeah, I'll send everyone your love, Sergeant. <laughs> Stay with me, Charlie. Hey, you'll be all right, Tomo. I'll send you a postcard. Don't any of you other yellow bellies think of getting yourselves shot in the foot? The sergeant major's having a time, parlez-vous. The sergeant major's having a time, parlez-vous. The sergeant major's having a time, scoffing the food behind the line. Pinky, pinky, parlez-vous. All that fighting for nothing. Back to square one. Oh, have another beer. I'm going after Charlie. Go on, how will you get there? Swim? I'll find a way, Jimmy. I'll steal a boat. I'll get back somehow. Don't be daft. That's desertion. They shoot deserters. Come back, Tomo. And have another beer. Oh, excuse uh, moi. Oh, you gave me fright. What are you doing there, hiding behind those empty crates? I'm not hiding. No? Then you are ill? No. No, not ill. I have seen you before, I think. My name is Anna. Tomo. Ah, so it is true then. Every English soldier is called Tommy. <laughs> no, not Tommy. Tomo. I'm Tomo. And what do you do in England, Tommy Tomo, when you are not playing soldiers? I oh, work on a farm. You are a farmer? No, not really. I work on Farmer Cox's farm with the pigs. Horses. Horses? Yes. Come with me. He's massive. <laughs> Magnificent. 
Dr. Jim. Hey, boy. Hey. Will you hold me? You're so warm. So soft. Anna! My father, the Petro. Anna, where the hell are you? It's chock a block in there. It come. Uh, you will return, yes? You, you promise? I promise. My dear Tomo, I do hope this letter finds you in good health. You can imagine my joy when I answered a knock at the door and standing there was your brother Charlie. He looks thinner than I remember him and much older too. He says that in spite of everything we may hear in the village, you have been having a fine time of it over in Belgium whatever that means. Much has changed in Idersley. More of the young men go to join up all the time. There are scarcely enough men to work the land. Hedges go untrimmed, and many fields lie fallow. I know Charlie and Molly will wish to give you their wonderful news themselves. Come home safe, Tomo. And soon... Your loving mother. They brought young children to Christ, that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. O merciful God, grant that the old Adam in this child may be so buried that the new man may be raised up in him. Grant that he may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. Thomas, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh, Charlie. Molly, isn't he lovely? He is, Mother. Little Tomo. <laughs> That's right, Big Joe. If only Big Tomo could be here too. And who's left behind to make the ammunition? Bloody women! The problem with Kitchener's army is that they're all amateurs. In my day, it was a regular army, professional. The hunter be on the run now if the young scamps were as brave as we were then. One last push! You are a silly old fart, Colonel. Just as my father always said you were. Silly old farts, the lot of you. I beg your pardon. The world is changing, old man. And when your lot stop ruling our lives, England will change too. There will be no more empire, no more bloody wars, no landowners exploiting the labor of the masses. Bolshevik. Call me what you like, Colonel. Because out there in Belgium, you can blast us to smithereens, but you'll not stop us. We're not just fighting the Germans, you see. We're at war with your kind, too. And the whole world's about to be blown apart by the likes of me. My dear Tomo, I write to say that I have had a darling little boy. Charlie and I agreed on his name at once. Tomo, after his brave uncle. One day, when this dreadful war is over, we shall all be together again and young Tomo will see his uncle for the first time and smile. Big Joe already smiles at him. And little Tomo has Big Joe's great grin. And Charlie's black hair. And your brown eyes. Because of all this, 
I love him more than I can say. Your Molly. Dear Private Peaceful. Well, I am the proud father, and you are the proud uncle of the finest looking fellow you ever saw. Molly tells me he's even more handsome than either of us, which I am sure is not true. Well, chin up, little brother. Charlie. Monsieur, Anna. Where is Anna? Gone. Uh, gone where? Dead. I can't hear you. Dead. Dead. How? What happened? She can't be dead. Fetching eggs from the next village. For you soldiers. For your supper. One big bombshell, and she is dead. No. I'm so sorry. I... Go to hell, Tommy. English, Germans, French. Take your war with you. Go to hell, all of you. Hadoch nacht and hell. They won't want you back. You were injured. I know. But Tomo... And little Tomo? You think I should let them all die without me? Would that make my son proud of me? I want us all to be together again, for everything to be just as it was. And would that make you love me? I do love you, you silly man. You know I do. Well, be more loving then. There's a bloody war on. You too. Enough. Oh, you've upset Tomo with your shouting. You weren't shouting, Mother. Honest. Oh, Charlie. Being married is hard. Having a family is hard. And not having a husband and a father for your children is hardest of all, believe me. So you listen to what your wife has to say and you think long and hard before making foolhardy promises to yourself and your pals. You curse the filthy Hun, stick the bayonet in right up to the hilt, twist, then pull it clean back out again. And there the Hun will lie, unseamed from the nave to the chops. What's that then, Sergeant? Poetry. Oh, I thought this was bayonet drill, Sergeant, not bleeding school again. I'm the best teacher you lads will ever have. And what do you do if the Hun bastard rises again like the resurrected Lazarus? Who? Never mind, Private. Just tell me you thwack him one. Yes, Sergeant. With the butt of my rifle. That's right, Private. Because rifle butts is made of solid walnuts. Walnuts, Sergeant? Not the nuts, Peaceful. No, I know. Timber. Yes. Good. You're learning, lads. All right now, you new clowns. These old lags will show you the ropes. So am I a new clown or an old lag? Sergeant Hanley. Charlie! <laughs> well, well, well. Private Peaceful. You've come back for more. Wouldn't miss it for the world, Sergeant. I'm warning you, Peaceful. I've got my eye on you. One step out of line. Don't worry about me, Sergeant. I'd be as good as gold. Cross my heart and hope to die. Charlie! Charlie! Be brave, come on. Sing! Sing! Or it is a lamb and say the bells of St. Clement. You owe me five farthings, say the bells of St. Martin. It's no use, Charlie. Every heavy gun the Germans have is aimed at us. Aimed at me. There's no one to save me now. No one will save me of all the love. 
Hold on to me, Tomo. You've got me. Charlie! Charlie! Hang on, Tomo. Hang on. We'll get you out. <laughs> Oh, oh. what we lost you, Tomo. Oh, the same show that buried you killed half a dozen of the others. Oh, you were lucky. Your head's a bit of a mess, though. Uh, lie still now. You lost a lot of blood. Where are we, Charlie? Middle of bloody no man's land, that's where. Some old German dugout. Can't go forward, can't go back. Then we best stay put, hadn't we, Charlie? Stay put. Stay put. You're worse than your brother, Peaceful. Our orders are to press home the attack and then hold our ground. Only 50 yards to the German trenches. I don't think I can make it, Charlie. I don't think I can stand up. On your feet, all of you. What in hell's name's the matter with you lot? On your feet, damn you. On your feet! I think we're all thinking the same thing, Sergeant. You take us out there now, and the German machine guns will mow us down. Maybe we should stay here, go back under cover of night. No point in going out there and getting ourselves killed for nothing now, is there, Sergeant? Are you disobeying my order, peaceful? No. I'm just letting you know what I think. What we all think. And I'm telling you, peaceful, that if you don't come with us when we go, it won't be a field punishment. It will be a court-martial. The firing squad. Do you hear me, Peaceful? Do you hear me? Yes. Sergeant, I hear you. But the thing is, Sergeant, even if I wanted to, I can't go with you, because I'd have to leave Tomo behind, and I can't do that, Sergeant. He's wounded. He can hardly walk, let alone run. I'm not leaving him. Miserable little worm. Peaceful. I should shoot you right where you are and save the firing squad the trouble. On your feet! I want you men out there! It's a court martial for anyone who stays! Means it, Charlie. Come on! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Poor beggars. Tomo. Tomo. I have to tell you, Charlie. I killed father. If only I had stepped out the way when he called to me. When the tree was falling, he wouldn't have died. I should have told you years ago, but he didn't dare. I always knew that, Tomo. So did Mother. But it was the tree that killed Father, not you. You're the best friend I've ever had, Charlie. <laughs> and you are the best person I have ever known. <laughs> Sergeant Hanley. Where are the others? Private Peaceful, I warned you. Lay me low, lay me low, lay me low, where no one can see me. I, Brigadier Fitzpatrick, convene this field general court martial at 0900 hours to try the case of cowardice in the face of the enemy against private peaceful. He disobeyed my orders, sir. The orders from headquarters, from high command, to press home the attack. Said he had to stay behind to look after his brother. We should call the brother as witness, though he's hardly impartial. Hmm. A soldier's friend, this Captain Wilkes, who commended Private Peaceful for bravery. 
Captain Wilkes is convalescing in a sanatorium on the Wirral, sir. Couldn't hack it. No, sir. And there is Private Peaceful's previous character, sir. His regimental conduct record. Field punishment number one. Precisely. This army runs on strict discipline. We cannot have soldiers disobeying orders in the face of the enemy. Private Peaceful is a mutinous troublemaker and has shown signs of cowardice on previous occasions. His foot... Indeed. All foot wounds are suspicious. Self-inflicted. Goes on all the time to get themselves out of the trenches. Yes, I did disobey Sergeant Hanny's order. The order was stupid, suicidal. We all knew it was. A dozen or more got wiped out in that attack. No one even got as far as the German wire. Private Peaceful, you are a worthless man. Worthless. This field general court martial finds the accused, Private Peaceful, guilty as charged in accordance with Section 4 of the Army Act. These proceedings are terminated at 0937 hours. Take away the prisoner. I hoped you'd come, Tommel. I didn't think they'd let you. How's your head? All mended. Good as new. <laughs> I want no tears, Tomo. Understand? <laughs> yes. You'll tell Mother and Molly how it really was, won't you? I want them to know the truth. <sighs> Didn't you tell the court martial? Of course I did. It wasn't a trial, Tomo. The brigadier had made up his mind I was guilty before he even sat down. I told him everything, just like it happened. I didn't hide anything. The whole court-martial took less than an hour, Tomo. That's all they gave me. One hour for a man's life. When you go out there tomorrow, Charlie, don't think of the army. Don't think of the war. Think of home. Think of little Tomo, Big Joe, and Mother, Father, and dark nights out fishing for sea trout in the Colonel's River, <laughs> and sunny summer days skinny dipping with Molly, and the goggled pilot in the aeroplane, and his unbucks. <laughs> I will, Tomo. And I want you to promise me. Promise you what, Charlie? I want you to have this. It's a wonderful watch. It'll never let you down. If you wind it regular, Time will never stop. And when you get back home, little Tomo can have it. He's got all the time in the world. 25 to 6. 25 minutes to go. How shall I live then? Shall I eat a hearty breakfast? I don't want it. Shall I scream and shout? What'll be the point? Shall I pray? Why? You too. No. They will do what they will do. The firing squad will be having their breakfast by now. 
Sipping their tea. No one has told me where it will happen. I don't want it to be in some dark prison yard with grey walls all around. I want it to be where there is sky. And clouds. And trees. And birds. Present! Ready! And! Fire! Regiment is marching again up towards the front, towards the Saab. We'll push them back from the Saab all the way back to Berlin. I will survive somehow, Charlie. I must. They have promises to keep. All that I wanted you made me When I stumbled you saved me In Private Peaceful, Tomo was played by Ted Allpress and Paul Checker. Charlie by Harvey Allpress and Mark Quartley. Molly by Amy Reed and Annette Chown and Jimmy by Daniel Houghton and Ben Allen. Sergeant Hanley was played by Nicholas Lindhurst. Hazel was Alison Reed, and James was Christopher Bianchi. Mr. Munnings was played by Nick Brimble, the Colonel by Peter Ellis, and the Vicar by Michael Morpurgo. Captain Wilkes was Jonathan Keeble, and Lieutenant Buckland was Terence Mann. The organ was played by Marjorie Cleverdon. Private Peaceful was written by Michael Morpurgo, dramatized by Simon Reed, and directed on location in Devon and in studio in Manchester by Susan Roberts. Well.